And you already know what it is, man. Salute to the subscribers, that notification gang, rightsgangclothing.com for the merchandise. You heard me right. So I know I let y'all know the other day that I was out of town with my job. I'll be gone for about a week. But, you know, there's still certain things that we need to talk about. Wait, wait, wait. Hold up. Before we even get started, man, I got to give a huge shout out to my man, Deshaun Ford, his wife, Tiffany, and their son, Quez. Like a lot of things that I do in battle rap, I don't really get like moved by, but yo, their son Quez is young and he watches the content and they posted a video of him watching the blog and bro, I was like, this is the best thing that I have ever saw as far as somebody watching the content. I truly appreciate it. Big shout out to you. Big shout out to your wife and your son. You know what I'm saying? He he's watching. He's watching some good things. You know what I'm saying? I don't blame him. You know what I mean? It's me. It's that's that's just what it is. It's me. What happened? So, my baby stay ill focused. We can move on. But if y'all keep this going man forth, is on the TV. Fight. There's no battle. There's no battle happening. Nobody's booking that. You know what I'm saying? No rematch or nothing like that. They like watch so you. I think that just uh, we gotta we gotta let this one go because um, that nigga was in a different bag. And he said that he just wrote it the same night. And I, you like watching him? You like you like his words? Yes. Clips. Shout out to my man Charlie <laughs> Clips. Shout out to Charlie Clips. We just ended this video. Get to how we get to. Cut like again to. Uh, so Norbs is uh, the hottest subject in battle rap. Uh, he had his interview with Chris Unbiased respectfully. And, uh, you know, he said a lot of things. And now there's a lot of artists that are starting to respond to what he said. Basically, uh, he, he said he found a lot of people. He said he was responsible for a lot of careers. He brought in a lot of talent. And respectfully so, he did bring in a good number of talent. But uh, some of the talent that he is starting, that he set claim to or said that he found, is like, nah, you ain't find me, partner. Um, Debo talked about Jazz, saying that he was the one that found Jazz. He said that he hit her up when she was on the radio with OMP. Then, you know, with the New Jersey twerk, they were saying he didn't find him. And now Calico, uh, he basically went off about the situation. He's basically like, nah, he did not find me whatsoever. So basically Cal starts off by saying, Norbs ain't responsible for shit over here. Bizarre, Proof, X Factor, Miles, Quest, Marv, all have joint custody over the start of my career. They all play key moments of my starting point. Because, you know, fan's point of view asks Norbs, is Norbs responsible for bringing Calico on? So then Calico goes on to say, somebody else commented, he said, yeah, but he didn't though. That's a bold-faced lie. I never heard of Norbs until I found out he was Mav's manager. I built my own relationship with Norbs after being on URL with uh, multiple times. I haven't watched his interview yet, but I'm quite sure his fat ass on there lying. He then went on to say, Norbs is playing victim. That was my dog. I went over to Norb's house and barbecued with my daughter and baby mom with his wife and daughter. Later watched the interview after being in his home where he totally fronted on me while talking to Verb on the phone interview. That shit was so weird, man. By and in doing that, he was saying, I don't give a fuck. That's lame as hell. Verb on there talking crazy about a nigga that was just holding your daughter in your living room and you acting like you don't even know the last time I was booked, agreeing that I haven't been booked in five years, knowing I just paid 30, I just got paid 30 for a classic. Nothing to do with it. I already had my own relationships before uh, I ever met him, saying that he met him when he was Mav's manager, you know what I'm saying, already. And you know, Calico battled Math Hoffa, Summer Madness, Body Bag, zzz, went kind of crazy on him. So the thing is about the Norbs interview, he said so many things that I guess, I don't know if he'd been wanting to say these things or it was just so many layers and layers and layers of material. And when I spoke about it, I just spoke from my perspective. I've seen a lot of people reacting to it. A lot of people spoke their, their viewpoint on the things. I just knew from my vantage point about, you know, working with him, working with them as far as never getting paid and then going to events and standing outside. That was just something that I personally wasn't gonna do. So um, as far as Calico goes, um, Calico said he felt ultimately disrespected when Norbs was on the phone with Verb and he was saying he didn't know the last time Calico had a classic, but 
Calico is referring to the fact that Norbs told him he went crazy for his ill will, and he said he got paid thirty. Cal got paid a thirty piece. This is why this is why Cal be sitting out because if he getting thirty thousand a joint, I don't blame him. I sit out too until I get my thirty piece wing, blue cheese, preferably. So he's basically saying that I was in your house in your living room, around your kids, and then when you get on the phone with somebody else. See, the thing is, when it comes to the interviewers, and this happens a lot of the time with people who do interviews or whose content is catered on having battle rappers involved with them, they have to kind of speak towards them or be cool with them because they know if they don't do, if they don't cater to the artist, the artist ain't gonna give them no more interviews, the artist ain't gonna wanna stand in front of their camera or talk to them on the phone. That's why I try to make 95% of the content that I do, maybe 97 or 98% without artists, because then you can kind of speak how you want and, and, and move how you want without having to worry about retribution or, or worrying about reprisal from an artist getting mad and saying, yo, you was talking to him, but I was at your crib and I was around your baby mama and I was around your girl and now you trying to do this to me. So he's not the only person. Emerson Kennedy did speak on it. Like he just replied to a tweet saying that, you know, uh, KG was the only person that would give him plates when nobody else wanted to. And a lot of people have been speaking about this. Loose Pipe Boy Bill Williams, I had watched a blog of his where he said people are calling Norms the Christopher Columbus of Battle Rap. He discovered talent that was already discovered. I don't know how you do this. These niggas are saying you discovered talent. When you saying you discovered talent that was already discovered. Now, I know for a fact there are a lot of artists whose careers you did play a part in. Uh, now, like I said, there's maybe 20 or 20, 30 that I could think of whose careers you did play a part in. But some of the artists that you were taking credit for are like, hell no, I was already around. And he gave credit to Bazaar, to Marv, to uh, Quest, to all of the people that was the Midwest um, movement for helping him get his career started. But now I ask you, when I mean, as fans, do you think it's important or do you think it even matters in correspondence to what he has going on about how many artists he discovered or whatever the case may be? Because look, I think it's just like this. If his only standing point is finding a bunch of talent, does that make you legitimately a part of this union? I felt like he had something to do with it, but at the same time, you know, that could be their return argument. And now you got artists like Calico who's going on the offensive saying, you didn't find me. What are you talking about? You're bugging. So I think that's just, it, it, it's, just it's a messy situation where, you know, it's kind of like Death of a Dynasty. When you ever seen Death of a Dynasty, when you watch that shit, you see how the Rockefeller shit went to, went to shambles or whatever the case may be. And I don't think that it didn't have to go the way it did, but when they don't respect somebody, I don't want to kick you out the whip. It's like, nigga, goodbye. You know what I'm saying? So, um, like I said, another joint. Uh, there's going to be a lot more talk. And there's a lot of people in their feelings. And a lot of people are going to say what they got to say. But for Calico, he's a top-tier artist who has been around for a while. He has been definitely known to say what he wants, how he feels. And he ain't never going to waver from that. So, if he feels like Norbs had nothing to do with his discovery, you better believe he's going to voice his opinion. And I just think it's crazy that... A lot of this shit is coming up now that the interview comes out and it's Norm's talking for almost two hours. You know what I'm saying? Like he's talking for two hours and he's just giving his viewpoints on everything up to down to down to down. And like I said, I'm just reporting on what I see. I got no vested interest in this. I'm not picking no side. But from what I see, Cal is like, fuck no, you ain't discovered me. And he basically said at the end of his joint that he felt like Norm was playing the victim. As far as with the whole situation, he said Norbs is playing the victim um, towards him. And it was because Norbs spoke on Cal and said that he felt like super disrespected because, you know, Cal had been to his crib. You know what I'm saying? They had played the Xbox and ate barbecue chicken together. So he felt like he owed him some kind of loyalty. But this goes back to what I was saying. There ain't no loyalty in battle rap. In battle rap, you are useful until you cannot be used anymore and then you are useless. It's like the music industry in every sense of the, everybody's gonna get jerked, everybody's gonna get robbed, everybody's gonna get used, and then after a while you'll get smart and you'll continue to do what you do. Unless they paying you from the beginning, unless they taking care of you, unless they got your best interest from the beginning. So another thing I wanted to talk about, uh, people was talking about events. So it's my man Ben Swayze. 
talking about getting into events and shit like that, uh, when, when you go to the battle rap events, does it mean something? Of course it means something. It means everything. Like when you've been promoting the league or you've been like, it means something to pull up, to get in, to make sure that you taking care of, that's taking care of somebody. When you family or when you quote unquote family, when you pull up to that event, you're not waiting in a line of 500 people outside. They're making sure that you good. King of the Dot always made sure I was good. RBE always made sure I was good. Always. I get to come in their shits with two, three people. They'd be like, you got plus three. You can come right in. But when you go to the league that you're supposed to be family with, you got to wait outside. You got to get all this bullshit. You got to get a, oh, you're not on the list. Oh, you can't get, 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 get. After a while, it just gets to the point where you don't even want to be around none of that no more. So I can see why a lot of people just be like, they don't want to deal with the messiness because it's so messy and then people hold things against you. They hold grudges, they hold gripes, and it's like all this stuff behind the scenes. So it gets kind of corny. But other than that, salute to the subscribers. That notification gang, there goes another one. <laughs>